With the rather recent release of Super Mario 3D All-Stars on Nintendo Switch, I decided that being able to finally play Super Mario Galaxy in glorious HD was a great moment to attempt a brand new challenge. We've already attempted to beat this game without a coin, but Super Mario Galaxy has another form of currency that is present all over the place as you play, Star Bits. These little pieces of stars fall from the sky all the time, and to collect them, you either walk into them or you use the star pointer. This made me wonder, can we beat Super Mario Galaxy without collecting a single star bit? The rules are simple. We are going to be playing the entire Super Mario Galaxy game on Switch and we'll try to avoid collecting a single star bit. You see this lovely counter that we see all the time down there? Well, we want to keep it at zero at all times. Obviously, star bits are an important part of this game and you use them to feed hungry lumas and discover hidden stars. So we'll have to hope that none of those hungry lumas are actually required to get to Bowser. As I'm playing this on the Switch, my star pointer is controlled by moving my controller around and since this pointer automatically collects all of the star bits it touches, I'll have to move it out of the screen and refrain from moving my controller too much. And trust me, this is actually way trickier than it seems. 60 stars are actually needed to beat Super Mario Galaxy, so hopefully we won't need a single star bit to get all of those. Now that everything has been set, make sure to subscribe to the channel, because only 22% of you guys watching me are actually subscribed. So to the other 78%, can I get you to hit that little sub button please? It takes a second and it helps me a lot. Alright, let's just jump into it. As Mario runs to Princess Peach's castle, some star bits will fall from the sky, which is a little bit annoying, but thankfully, the Mushroom Kingdom is wide enough for us to dodge those. Once the princess gets captured and we get wrecked by this Magikoopa, we'll wake up on this planet and we'll have to catch this little bunny. There's gonna be a couple star bits hiding in grass and bushes as you're running to catch the bunny, but if you're being careful, everything's gonna be fine. Making your way to the first Grand Star is not very difficult, as very few star bits are actually going to be on your path. Just make sure the star pointer is not on the screen and the star will be yours. Our first step will be to go to the Good Egg Galaxy, and you'll need to be staying away from enemies when you can, as defeating them can make some evil star bits appear. Oh, and here's a pro tip for you that will be valid throughout all of the run. When getting into one of those lounge stars, make sure that your star cursor is not on the screen, or you might collect some of those star bits that fly around you. They fly so close, they're so easy to collect, just make sure not to. The fight against Dino Piranha is a little bit difficult, as the planet is full of star bits crystals and the plant can run into them and break them open. Every time you hit the bus, make sure to stay as far as you can from it, as lots of star bits will explode around and these can be collected quite easily when you're not expecting them. Once you get the star and return to the Comet Observatory, this little Luma over here wants to teach you something. He wants to teach you about star bits and most importantly how to collect them. Are you serious my dude? You trolling me right now? I tried leaving the room but the game won't let me. I am stuck in here. I have to collect star bits. I actually wondered if saving and quitting my game might be the way to go to avoid touching the star bits, but alas, as soon as you re-enter the room, the same tutorial cutscene starts again. This Luma really wants to ruin the day. There's a total of 7 star bits in this room, but to beat the tutorial, you need to collect 5. Okay, that's not seven, but still, that's five already? Why are you so mean to me, Luma? <sighs> the second star in the Good Egg Galaxy is called a snack of cosmic proportions. And to be honest, this got me quite scared, and I had reasons to be. To get this star, we need to feed a hungry Luma. And what do you think the Lumas eat? Yup, you guessed it, star bits. Let's see how many star bits this little dude wants. Hopefully five will be good. <laughs> Wait, what? A hundred? Are you serious? Can't you just go to McDonald's instead? 
Uh, I tried going all over the place, going from lounge star to lounge star, but there is nowhere to go. If you want the star, well then we absolutely have to feed the Luma, meaning we have to collect 100 star bits and throw them all in his mouth. After feeding this Luma, we'll soon reach this 2D section, which was a little bit scary. There's a couple of star bits on your path, but thankfully we can crouch underneath them and avoid collecting a single one which is good. After all of this pain, I'm happy to report that Good Egg Galaxy 3 is pretty easy and doesn't really feature any star bits on your way to King Caliente. Fighting the boss is also pretty easy and once more just make sure to be far from it after a hit and none of these evil star bits will ever reach your way. Honey Hive Galaxy is up and there's a few star bits on your way, but thankfully being B Mario is pretty helpful and helps you avoid collecting those. There's gonna be some star bits on those flowers over there, but it's pretty easy to make your way around them. Climb up the honey wall to reach Queen Bee and after collecting all of the star shards on her bee buddy, a lounge star will appear that leads us to the star. Yay! Wait, wait a minute, why do I have 4 star bits now? That ain't right. So here's the thing, there is no way to avoid collecting those star bits when you enter the lounge star. Kinda like it was impossible to dodge these coins back when I tried to beat Mario Galaxy 2 without a coin. That's 4 more star bits we would need to add, if there wasn't a way around this. Well turns out that the star is actually located on top of this tree which is located on the very first planet you explore. If there'd be a way to reach the top of the tree without doing the entire level, then we'd be good to go and we'd be able to save 4 star bits. As I was doing my research, I stumbled around this video by See Me Craft, which actually attempted this very same challenge and found a big brain way to get to the top of the tree by exploiting a game mechanic. You see, as you slide down a hill in Mario Galaxy, you usually cannot spin jump and make your way up. That is, if you do it the legit way, but there is a glitch used by speedrunners called slope climbing. Basically, if you face away from the slope you want to climb and you press the control stick in the direction Mario is facing, jump and spin while moving the control stick onto the other direction, well, Mario will actually be able to recover his spin jump and by doing that repeatedly, you'll start climbing slopes. <laughs> Combining this mechanic with Simi Craft's tree jumping strategy, we can actually make our way from this this wood platform to the tree, then we climb up and slide onto the other tree and then we can simply slope climb up to Captain Toad and recover the star and thus we avoid collecting 4 more star bits. Now this is epic so big shout out to see me craft and make sure to check out his video for more big brain strategies like this one. You really saved me there buddy. The second star in Honey Hive is pretty easy to get and there's not a lot of star bits on the road, just stay clear from those big rocks at all cost, or else. I do admit that falling down this pit was quite scary because of all the star bits, but if you stay away from the middle part, well you'll be all good. The boss does spit a bunch of star bits after you attack him, so you'll have to be a little bit lucky and avoid them all, but it is possible. Honey Hive Galaxy 3 is super easy and you'll clear it without a problem. The same thing can be said about Flip Switch Galaxy, which is actually free of star bits. There is zero here and that's quite nice. Loop de Loop Galaxy does contain a couple of star bits on the sides of the racetrack, but my star bit pointer never appeared on screen, so I never touch a single one. I won't complain, this one was easy. Bowser Jr's robot reactor is up and there's a bunch of star bits surrounding you as you launch yourself to the bus. Once you break the gate to the grand star, there's gonna be a bunch of star bits on your way, but if you wait patiently for those to vanish, then you'll beat this bus in no time. Let's make our way to the fountain and visit the Space Junk Galaxy. This level contains a bunch of pull stars and to use those, well you must use your star pointer on screen, so you'll have to be very careful never to accidentally point a star bit while moving Mario from one pull star to the next. This is very nerve wracking, but it is possible. 
Once you get inside that lounge star, things will go down real quick though, as for some odd reason, I was always given one star bit when landing on the rocket ship over there. There was no way for me to avoid that one, and that was quite cheap. Since this lonely star bit is pretty much random, well exit the level and come back, and after a couple of tries, you'll get lucky and will be able to dodge it. That is pure luck though. <laughs> Space Junk 2 is pretty easy and doesn't feature any challenge whatsoever. And the same thing can be said about Space Junk 3, although I have to admit that the boss fight against this weird spider thing there is annoying. When you hurt it, a bunch of star bits will appear around the battle arena, and since you cannot really dodge those, well you'll need to stand still and you'll probably take some damage while waiting for the star bits to disappear. It's kind of annoying, but not really difficult though. Rolling Green Galaxy is next and you can avoid every star bits on the way. Just make sure not to touch those big yellow coins there, as they do make star bits appear. <laughs> Never trust a coin. Battle Rock Galaxy is up, and there are so many star bits falling from the sky while you're on that moving platform there. It is really scary, and you'll have to be moving at all times to dodge those, but it is possible. Oh, look at those poor star bits in that cage, they're stuck there. <laughs> Let's make sure not to free them. Battle Rock 2 does contain this pull star part where you need to point at the screen. As usual, make sure never to point directly at a star bit and you'll be good. Battle Rock 3 does contain a 2D side scroller section that is quite difficult. To dodge all of those star bits there, you'll need to slide on the left wall and then defeat the Goomba to crouch underneath the final star bit. It is very scary looking, but possible. Bowser's Star Reactor is a pretty easy stage and only features one section where there's tons of star bits. Thankfully, you can move around those and clear this stage without too much problems. I'm not gonna waste time talking about the Beach Ball Galaxy for too long, because it's one of the easiest, if not the easiest one for this challenge. Basically, you always need to swim underwater to retrieve a shell, star piece or whatever. All three stars can be obtained in no time. I was actually afraid of the Bubble Breeze Galaxy, because it is a level where you gotta move Mario around by using the star pointer, but there are no star bits on the way. Just make sure to avoid those big question mark coins, as usual, and you'll be good. The very spooky ghostly galaxy is next, and the first star is not very hard to get and there's only going to be annoying star bits near the end over there, but if you do a backflip instead of using the spring, you'll be okay. The second star pits you against a very fast boo and you're gonna have to use your star pointer again. Just avoid pointing at star bits and you'll be okay. The third and final star is more of a challenge, especially the sling star bits where you must use the pointer to shoot Mario without actually touching the star bits. It's very precise, but it is possible. Bowser Jr's Airship Armada is next, and this level is actually not very difficult. Most of the star bits are not even on your path and need you to point at them to collect them, so we're good. Gusty Garden Galaxy, aka the galaxy with the best song ever, is up, and getting the first star won't be too difficult. You'll have to defeat some plants along the way, and they do explode into multiple yucky star bits, but just wait for those to disappear and you'll be okay. To defeat the boss and get the second star, you'll have to be careful, as Major Burroughs does love to dig out star bits from the ground, which is kind of annoying in this quest, but just be careful and it's gonna be fine. The third and final star is really annoying though, this part here features all sorts of gravities and you'll be pushed all over the place, and so will the star bits around you. Getting the star shards was pretty scary, especially this fifth one which moves alongside this planet with star bits moving around it. You'll just have to make a very precise run for the shard while dodging the star bit and you'll be good. Well, since it's November right now, I welcome you to the Freeze Flame Galaxy, a very cold level with tons of ice, snow and cold water. 
Thankfully, this level is possible without a star bit. Just avoid pointing at anything and move around the star bits on your way and you'll soon get all of your stars. The only scary part of this galaxy is when you get your third star. You're meant to ice skate quickly to the end of the stage, but there's a bunch of star bits on the way, so you'll really need to be careful. It is possible to dodge them all on time and get the star. Welcome to Dusty Dunes Galaxy, the mandatory desert stage of a Mario game, and the first part doesn't contain a single star bit. Once you go inside that pipe, well get ready for a difficult 2D section though, this part with the giant Indiana Jones boulder that you need to run away from is quite spooky, because there's a bunch of star bits on your way and you cannot jump high enough to dodge them, but if you do a long jump instead, well it works and you can clear this part, yay! Don't be too happy yet though, as this stage is not done with us. To get to the star, we need to climb this big tower, and it is actually super difficult, because there is no way for us to avoid touching this big coin that makes a bunch of star bits appear. Considering we're meant to do wall jumps to get up the tower, we'll need to collect quite a few star bits, which isn't what we want. After multiple attempts, I did find a way to climb this tower without collecting those yucky star bits. If we long jump from this corner and then do a spin jump, we can wall jump from there and skip this part entirely. Now this is epic. Thankfully, after you get that very tricky first star, this level will be out of challenges to throw at you as Dusty Dunes 2 and 3 are both super easy to clear. Wait a minute, is that Bowser's Dark Matter plant I see? Well yes, and we won't be seeing it for too long, as this level is super easy and doesn't contain a single star bit. Goodbye Bow Bow! Gold Leaf Galaxy is up, and thankfully the first star is actually quite easy to get, just make sure not to hit that switch and you're good to go. There is one difficult part in Gold Leaf 2, where you need to grab this B Mario Mushroom while using a Cataquack and there are star bits all over the place. This jump is very scary, you only have one shot, one opportunity, but alas, it is possible. The third star does contain a couple of star bits here and there, but it's pretty easy nonetheless. You know, while we're on the topic of easy stars to get for this challenge, welcome to the Sea Slide Galaxy a very easy level where swimming will get you far. Follow Shark Boy over there to get your first star, then follow and race the penguins for the second star, and then race your boy Shadow Mario to get the third star, and yeah, basically as long as you avoid the star bits that are located underwater and those that you can point at, well nothing will be a challenge over here. Toy Time Galaxy is our next stop, and I was afraid of using the Spring Mario Mushroom in this level, but turns out we won't have to worry about that. Why? Well here's the thing, after you clear this first part here, you'll hop inside of this lounge star, and as you fly to the next part, you'll collect two star bits. Wait, what? How? I did try this level many times, assuming it might be random, but no. Every single time I use this lounge star, I get two star bits. I eventually realized that the yellow pencil case over there gives us those star bits. <sighs> Why do you do this to me, yellow pencil case? That ain't nice. I guess we're gonna have to exit this stage and we're gonna have to get our stars elsewhere. Thankfully, we have a couple more galaxies to explore and a bunch of prankster comets all over the place, so we can go visit the fast foe comet of Beach Ball Galaxy, which wants us to avoid those fast moving thwumpies and wumpies. There's only one troll star bit that is located over there. If you are too close to the sides of the thing, wump will crush you, and if you're too close to the middle, well, you'll collect the star bit. So yeah, be extra careful and you'll be okay. Buoy Bay's galaxy is up and there's tons of star bits in the background while you're swimming underwater, so make sure to keep your star pointer out of the screen at all times and you'll be good. I then went back to Ghostly Galaxy to defeat Boulder Geist with only one health point, and the only star bits here are located at the beginning while you make your way down the staircase. Avoid those and the ones that Boulder Geist gives you after you hit him and you'll be good. 
Also, notice how after you defeat the boss, there is a lonely Starbit looking at you from afar. Oh, he's just so mad he hasn't been collected. <laughs> I don't know man, that was pretty funny to me, I just wanted to share it. Bowser Jr's Lava Reactor is quite the easy level and there won't be a single Starbit on your path, so you'll clear it quite fast. Deep Dark Galaxy does feature a fight against Camilla and she does give you a lot of star bits after you hurt her. Since the platform to fight here is so small, I suggest just jumping off of it after you hurt Camilla and wait 10 seconds for the star bits to disappear before you go back up and finish the fight. All of the other stars are pretty easy to collect and they do not feature star bits on your path, so no need to worry. Dreadnought Galaxy was my next step, but I soon found myself stuck. You see, this 2D section over there wants you to do a bunch of wall jump on those two walls, and although they move left and right, there's just no way up there without touching a few star bits. Yeah, we're gonna have to skip this one for now and hopefully never come back. Melty Molten Galaxy features a pointer section that is full of star bits and touching one by accident can happen quite easily. But eventually, I did manage to beat this part. Only to reach this lounge star, and as you can see, well, yep, just like Toy Time Galaxy, we are given a few star bits automatically, and there's not much we can do about it. You know what? Let's skip this one for now. Obviously, I still need more stars to beat the game, so from now on, well, I guess we're gonna be exploring older levels and new areas. The gate is one of those new areas I'm talking about, and it's a very easy star to get. Basically, just grab the red star power up over there and start flying to collect 100 purple coins. Remember Good Egg Galaxy 1? Well, we now need to clear it super fast, which doesn't make it any more difficult. Oh, and remember when Luigi got stuck on top of a house? Well, now you do, because all you need to do is a triple jump and he's saved. Racing Shadow Mario in Honey Hive Galaxy and Freeze Flame Galaxy is also pretty easy and there's not much star bits on your way, so that's two easy stars for ya. Honey Climb Galaxy is up and this is a pretty easy one, as you can fly around most of the star bits and dodge them all. I gotta admit that those star bits around you when you use the lounge stars made me quite scared, but thankfully we don't collect a single one so we're good. There's a couple star bits on the way in Dusty Dunes Galaxy during the speedrun challenge, but if you're being careful, you'll get the star in no time. Welcome to Hurry Scurry Galaxy, and in this galaxy, well you can see there's lots of star bits on the way during this first part. Thankfully, we can walk around them and make our way to this planet where there is no star bits at all, so we're good to go. And now, with 60 stars in hand, we can reach the final level of this quest, Bowser's Galaxy Generator. This level is not really difficult for the first couple parts, but you know we had to reach a 2D section at one point. Ah, 2D sections, always there to ruin the fun. As you can see, there's not much room for error here and there are lots of star bits. How do we avoid them all? Well, it's pretty difficult. On my first couple runs, I managed to get only 5 star bits, which wasn't good enough, so I tried over and over again, and here's the final strat I came up with. If you jump above those first two star bits quickly, then you can crouch and go underneath that third one. Now sadly, the wall jumping part here will force us to grab one star bit. I tried many ways to do it, but I always collect one. And you might be tempted to say that the second wall jump is actually the same thing, and I thought it was, but no, you can actually use this fire bar to damage boost yourself up there and avoid collecting a star bit. Turns out you can actually clear this part with only one star bit. Let's beat Bowser and avoid the star bits that are all over the planet, and there we go. We saved the princess and completely destroyed the universe? Yay, I guess? So, is it possible to beat Super Mario Galaxy without touching a single star bit? Well, sadly no. We had to collect one at the end over there, five during the tutorial part, and sadly we needed 100 to feed the hungry Luma in Good Egg Galaxy. That brings the total to 106 star bits. Which is a lot, but still my best run. Now, how many star bits would we need to get all 120 stars? Well, probably a couple more, eh? 
If this video reaches 6,000 likes, then I will attempt to get all 120 stars and tell you guys how many star bits we need to beat those. Smash like if you want to see that. And thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, well, subscribe and hit the bell to make sure never to miss a single upload from me. While you wait for the next challenge video to be released, why not tap the cards on screen right now and check out the other ones I did. I attempted to beat Mario 35, you know, the Battle Royale Mario without touching a coin, so you know, you definitely want to check that one out. Alright, I'll see you in the next one.